Molinacqui, I'm an open source evangelist. In today's talk, I'm going to introduce PyP, a programmable network proxy for cloud, edge, and IoT. Here is the agenda for today's talk. I'll be briefly explaining what is PyP and its key characteristics. Then we'll take a high-level view of PyP architecture and design. And in the end, I'll be sharing the links which can be used to learn more. So what is PyP? PyP is an open source, lightweight, high performance, modular, programmable cloud native network stream processor. It has been used and can be used in different use cases like you know, proxy solutions, load balancers, edge routers, API gateways, sidecars, and so on and so forth. I have highlighted the keywords which have specific meaning and I'll be explaining them in the next slide. Compiled PyP executable is, has zero external dependency and is around 10 megabytes in size and requires a very small memory footprint to run. PyP is written in C++, it leverages asynchronous networking, allocated resources are pooled and reused. PyP is versatile and has been used or can be used in multiple use cases, which we'll explain in the previous slide. PyP comes with its own built-in custom JavaScript engine called PyP.js and has no garbage collection overhead and it implements a subset of ECMA standard. PyP provides a range of pluggable building blocks, also known as the filters, which can be chained together in any fashion to build a pipeline. I'll be talking about pipelines and filters in the next slides. PyP is fully open source and all the source code is available on the GitHub repository. Just take a look at the architecture and design. PyP is a stream oriented where it takes streams in, processes them and outputs the streams. PyP is event-driven in the sense that PyP streams are made of events instead of bytes. There are four types of events in PyP, the data event, and three non-data are already known as the marker events over there. A stream coming along from the network is a series of data events, each holding a chunk of bytes received from the TCP communication there. Events are processed by a chain of filters, where you can think of filters like a tiny Unix process that reads from its input, writes to its output, with the output of one filter connected to the input of the next. Chain of filters in PyP is known as the pipeline, and that's the key concept in pipeline, and PyP provides uh, four different categories of the pipeline. The port pipeline is the one which is uh, used when you are writing a network service, which is listening on a particular port. And if you need a cron job like functionality, uh, I mean the periodic timers there, then you go with the timer pipeline. And if you need to process the signals which are sent to the Unix process, then you, you work with the signal pipeline. And the sub pipeline is, is a unique one that is actually that can only be called by the joint filter. Port timer and signals pipelines are known as the root pipelines and they cannot be invoked by any joint filter. A PyP module is a PyPGS source file containing the PyP script that configures a set of pipeline layouts actually. Uh, as you see that the pipeline layout is actually how you compose or chain the filters together. And each module has its, uh, its own context. Uh, the context is actually where you define the variables which can be used internally and only visible internally through this module. But you can use the export and import functionality to export the variables so the other modules can see that one. Here is a look at a uh, simple Hello World example there. So what we are going to do is actually we are writing a simple uh, PyP script that is going to listen on port 6080 and it's just going to return hi there to every HTTP request no matter uh, what verb you use. Here we are actually using three different filters there. Decode HTTP replace message and encode HTTP response. On the left hand side actually it shows the visual depiction of the messages or the events which happen inside the PyP. Uh, don't worry, actually, uh, if you need, just need to write a simple hello world like script there, so you can do that with only three lines of that one, the one in the right side, actually, you can see here the line four to eight on the top one side can be replaced with line four to six, and the server HTTP is actually the same as doing the decoding, replacing message, and encoding the HTTP response. PyP comes with admin web UI uh, that actually provides you the intelligent syntax highlighting of the PyP scripts, which, uh, which you can use to develop the uh, PyP scripts over there. And on the right hand side, actually, you can see the visual depiction of your, how the pipeline looks like. Uh, please visit uh, PyP website, plumesh.io, for more details, uh, or you can subscribe to the uh, Twitter handle PyP Proxy, or you can join our Slack channel. Thank you so much.